Joining us now for our weekly partnership segment with The Daily Poster is founder of that outlet, the man himself, David Sirota. Great to see you, sir. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Absolutely. So big news this week. Stephen Breyer, Supreme Court Justice, is retiring, allowing Biden and the Senate Democrats to uh, fill his shoes. And you have a piece up at the Daily Post. Let's go ahead and throw this up on the screen where you say another Supreme Court corporatist would be a disaster. Now, I think a lot of people would be surprised to learn because all they've heard from the media is O'Brien's a liberal and he's a consistent, reliable vote on the liberal side of things, that he's been pretty bad where it comes to corporate power. First, lay out his legacy, and then we can talk about the moving forward. Sure. Uh, over the course of his career, uh, Stephen Breyer has been a fairly reliable vote for the agenda of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which is <laughs> the biggest and most powerful uh, corporate lobby group in America. So the chamber files amicus briefs, uh, which urge the court to rule this way or that way. And that's the best way to know what large corporations in America really want. And over the course of his career, according to uh, the, the data, uh, he has voted with the Chamber of Commerce uh, a, a majority of times that the Chamber of Commerce has weighed in on cases. Uh, so he has uh, been uh, a reliable vote uh, against stronger antitrust enforcement. Uh, he has been a vote uh, against um, uh, various uh, environmental issues uh, when it comes, uh, for instance, uh, he was against a state mining ban. He voted uh, to help empower energy companies to build pipelines uh, through uh, public lands. Uh, so the point being, we could go through the, the list here, but the point being is that Stephen Breyer, even though he was appointed by uh, Bill Clinton, or maybe perhaps because he was appointed by Bill Clinton, <laughs> uh, he has been a reliable vote for big business. And the problem is, is that I, we live in an era where the Supreme Court has become uh, very extremist, uh, even in compared to uh, recent courts. The Roberts Court has become very extremist when it comes to siding with big business. That, that essentially uh, the Roberts Court, and let's remember John Roberts used to uh, represent the Chamber of Commerce as a lawyer, that the yeah. Roberts Court has become a reliable, probably one of history's most reliable uh, uh, blockades of policy for big business. So I'm just really glad that you're focusing on this. Nobody ever seems to understand that the law has immense implications for how big business operates. Can you just describe what it means exactly to side with the chamber and court? Like, what does that look like for people? Sure. I mean, look, Stephen Breyer didn't support all of the chamber's mm -hmm. uh, uh, amicus briefs. But, but broadly speaking, the Chamber of Commerce is... Uh, uh, not only putting forward judicial nominee names, I mean, that's one of the things that it has been doing, uh, but it, it, these amicus briefs push the court on everything from uh, union rights uh, to uh, federal agencies' regulatory power uh, to uh, the uh, ability of, for instance, the SEC uh, to crack down on uh, Wall Street banks. Uh, Breyer, by the way, was, was a, a vote for a, a ruling that essentially limited the SEC's ability to punish corporate criminals. So the point being is that the Chamber of Commerce is, is in these divisive cases where there are questions about the law. Can the SEC, for instance, seriously punish a Wall Street bank? The Chamber of Commerce is filing detailed amicus briefs to try to essentially influence those rulings uh, to make sure the court comes down on the side of corporate power. And David, I mean, this is kind of a layup for you, but I want to go ahead and ask it. Why is it that the media doesn't explain this well? <laughs> I mean, we've all heard a lot, and I don't want to downplay these decisions are important. Obergefell, you know, the right for gay people to get married, um, the right of women to choose for themselves, Roe versus Wade. These are important things, but we hear a lot about those cases and most people have never heard anything about these other instances where, you know, their work lives and their economic reality are impacted by what the court does. Why is that, David Sirota? Well, uh, corporate media is corporate. So corporate media isn't all that interested in telling the story of how uh, the corporate America's uh, most powerful lobby group is winning case after case after case at the high court. So there's a essentially... Uh, there, it's kind of a baked in bias, I would argue, that corporate media is not interested in this. Now, I would also say that a lot of these cases that deal with corporate power uh, are uh, esoteric. Uh, they deal with 
uh, seemingly small, very detailed uh, issues. Uh, there was a ruling, for instance, can pensioners sue uh, their uh, retirement fund if their retirement fund uh, is mismanaging their money? Uh, and, and it deals with very arcane parts of the law. So in some ways, uh, writing about that can seem uh, very detailed, uh, very in the weeds. But again, it is the it is sort of the machine thrumming in the background that the that the Congress will pass something or an agency will try to do something, and then a few years later, a, an esoteric case will come to the court. The, the Chamber of Commerce will put forward an amicus brief, and bam, the agency uh, is limited, the law is gutted or overturned, uh, and it and that keeps happening over and over and over again. And what you end up with at the end of the day uh, is a legal system uh, that has in many cases, close the courthouse, door, courthouse doors to plaintiffs uh, who are trying to uh, hold big corporations accountable. You have a legal architecture that is rigged against uh, the American worker, that is rigged against the environment. And by the way, one last thing on Steve, Stephen Breyer. Uh, back in 2010, months after the Citizens United decision, I mean, he had the nerve to go out uh, and say that the Roberts court uh, is not actually uh, pro-business, which is so ridiculous. And I think <laughs> we've seen these justices go out lately trying to uh, defend the legitimacy of the court, because I I think they sense that more and more people have caught on to how rigged this court is. Uh, but the problem is, uh, is that in a Supreme Court nomination fight, my guess is we're not going to hear very much uh, about economic issues, even though that is mostly what the court is doing on a day to day basis, that we're going to hear a lot, a lot about these. Definitely, I agree with you, important uh, hot button social issues, but we will not hear near almost anything when it comes to what the court is doing on a day-to-day -day basis for big business. Yeah. And I would posit one other reason, which is that those hot button social issues, they break down in along convenient lines. Republicans Absolutely. are on this side and the liberals are on that side and that makes it easy. And um, these economic issues, as you're pointing out, a lot of times, you know, RBG was on the wrong side of some of those issues. Oh, yeah. Liberal icons, Stephen Breyer is on the wrong side of those issues, Justice Hagan. So it, complicates this narrative of, you know, if you're at Fox News, Republicans good and Democrats right. bad. And if you're at CNN or MSNBC, the reverse, it makes it a lot more complicated and exposes actually there's a lot of treachery to go around here. And my fear, honestly, about this nomination fight, uh, truly, is that another Stephen Breyer would just lock in a, a, almost a guarantee that the Supreme Court remains a corporate court. That yep. the even the discourse, the debate, how how this nomination is discussed already, you you haven't seen nearly any discussion about what could be done to make the court uh, more on the side of workers. There's been discussions about uh, what is the uh, 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 what, what demographic groups uh, may be represented in the nomination pick. Uh, you've seen uh, questions uh, about uh, the politics of the nomination, but. There's been very, there's been almost no discourse, no discussion about the economic implications. I remember back in the, in the Neil Gorsuch nomination, for like one minute, economic issues and corporate power issues came up in, in a very big way about that, that uh, discussion about his ruling with the, with the trucker who was freezing yes. on the side of the road. Yeah. And it came up for one second and it was a big story for like one second. And I remember being like, wow, this is the first time I can remember <laughs> uh, a, an economic or corporate power issue actually being at the center of a Supreme Court nomination fight. And then boom, it was gone. And yep. so I, what I worry about is that without that kind of discussion, uh, without that kind of focus, on the nominee's record and, and what kind of nominee uh, Biden is going to put forward, uh, that you get another Stephen Breyer and it almost guarantees to lock in this corporate court, which has been ha putting its boot on the neck of the American worker for, uh, for 16 years plus. And by the way, according to the chart that you have in your piece, Justice Gorsuch, the most reliable yes. vote for yes. the Chamber of Commerce of all of the justices who are currently sitting. There you go. Yeah, no, that's um, how it goes. This is why everybody should subscribe to your work, by the way, because you're talking about these issues in a way that you won't find anywhere else. And we're always grateful for your time, David. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks to both of you. Mm -hmm. Our pleasure. Always. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. We'll have more for you later. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.